Tokyo subway system is world famous for being organized and efficient. But have you ever wondered where and how it all began? The Japanese government developed Notification 56 on March 30th, 1925, which was a railway urban development plan for the Tokyo area. It was inspired in part by entrepreneur Noritsugu Hayakawa's vision for a high-speed underground rail network similar to London's Underground, which had already been in operation for 52 years by that time. Up until then, relatively slow streetcars were the workhorse, transporting the masses around Tokyo, which already had a bulging population of 3.7 million people by the mid-1920s. Notification 56 was a collaboration between the national government and the city of Tokyo. It consisted of a network of five railway lines spanning a combined total of 82.4 kilometers. They would be built on dedicated rail track, separated from normal road and pedestrian traffic. This would enable the trains to travel at much higher speeds than the current streetcars, which would often find themselves caught in gridlock traffic at street level. Line number one would span 16.7 kilometers in total and would partially resemble the Ginza line. It would start in Shinagawa in the south of Tokyo, then head north past Shimbashi and Akihabara before making a turn east at Weno Station. It would finally terminate at Asakusa on the Sumida River. Line 2 would be 16.1 kilometers in length and closely resemble the modern day Habiya line. It too would start in the south near Meguro and head northeast towards the Imperial Palace and Tokyo Station, where it would intersect the Yamanote Line Circle, where Yurakucho Station is today. It would continue north following the rough alignment of the Sumida River, before terminating at Minami Senju. Line number three would start off in the up and coming Shibuya area, which had seen a rapid growth in population since the 1923 earthquake, two years earlier. It would closely resemble today's Toei Mita line and was envisaged to be 15.4 kilometers long. It too would head east on the south side of the Imperial Palace before passing Tokyo Station and heading northwest. It was envisaged that it would terminate at Sugumo Station on the Yamanote line. Line four in red was the longest of the proposed five lines. The sideway shape U would be 20 kilometers long and it would closely resemble the Marinochi line today. It would start off in Shinjuku then head east on the underside of the Imperial Palace before crossing to the other side of the Yamanote line where it would continue on to Sakiji near the Sumida River. Once at the river, it would head northwest where it would terminate at Otsuka Station. Otsuka was more developed as an urban area than Ikebukuro at the time. Finally, Line 5 would have an east-west alignment. The 14.2 kilometer line would start at Ikebukuro, which was nothing but an empty field 22 years earlier. It would then head southeast, passing the north side of the Imperial Palace before intersecting the Yamanote line at Tokyo Station. It would then continue its run east along the Sumida River before terminating at Susaki, near where Kabiya Park is today. Line 5 presented several engineering challenges, having to cross the 150 meter wide Sumida River and Yamanote line. Notification 56 was never set in stone and was designed based on urban projections of Tokyo of the 1920s. It was envisaged that four out of the five lines would be built by government. The father of the Tokyo subway system, Hayakawa, had already acquired a license to build subway line number one with his private company, Tokyo Underground Railroad. On December 30th, 1927, the first 2.2 kilometer section of line one would open between Asakusa and Weno. It would take nine years in total for Hayakawa's Tokyo Underground Railroad Company to complete the eight kilometer section to Shimbashi. In the meantime, entrepreneur Keita Goto, who was famous for transportation and department stores in the Shibuya area, obtained a license to build line number three via his Tokyo High Speed Railway Company. He promised to build the line in half the time by working on four sections all at the same time. And within five years, he would open a section between Shibuya and Shimbashi. And on the 16th of September 1939, after fierce negotiation between the two private companies, Lines 1 and 3 were joined at Shimbashi Station, which is the formation of today's modern day Ginza Line. In June 1942, the government owned Taito Rapid Transit Authority started construction on the 20 km long Line 4. 1.2 kilometers of cut and cover tunnels would be built out from Akasaka Mitsuke Station, heading towards Shinjuku but works would soon be cancelled due to an escalation in World War II in 1944. 
Nothing of lines 2 and 5 would be built in accordance with notification 56, and notification 56 itself would be replaced by notification 256 in 1946, after the end of World War II. Okay guys, that was the city of Tokyo's first real rail plan based on urban development of the time. It's quite amazing to see nearly 100 years later that all of these lines have now been built, albeit with a few tweaks and adjustments. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Mike and I'll see you on the next one.